Now, if we can't prevent bugs, our second defense is to try to localize them to a small part of the program, so we don't have to look too hard to find the cause of the bug. When localized to a single method or a small module, bugs may be found simply by studying the program text. Now, we've already talked about failing fast. That means that the earlier a problem is observed, the closer to its cause, the easier it's going to be to fix. In this section, we're going to talk about a particular text called assertions. Let's start with a simple example. So we have a square root function, takes in a single double argument, and returns a double result. It requires that argument to be greater than or equal to zero, because otherwise we're not going to be able to compute a square root, and it returns an approximation of the square root of x. Now suppose somebody does call square root with a negative argument, breaking this precondition. Then what's the best behavior for square root? Since the caller has failed to satisfy the requirement that x should be non-negative, square root is actually no longer bound by the terms of its contract, so it's technically free to do whatever it wants. It can return an arbitrary value, it could enter an infinite loop and never return, it can even melt down the CPU if it wants. Since that bad call indicates a bug in the caller, however, the most useful behavior would be to point out the bug to that client as early as possible. So we can do this by inserting a runtime assertion that tests the precondition before we even start the method. Here's one way we might write that assertion. In other words, if the precondition is not satisfied, we're going to throw an exception. The particular exception we're going to use is a built-in one in, in Java called assertion error. Now, the, that way, the effects of the caller's bug, passing a negative value here for x, are prevented from propagating further in the program. Checking preconditions like this is an example of defensive programming. Real programs are rarely bug-free, so defensive programming offers a way to mitigate the effects of those bugs, even if you don't know where they are. Now, it's a common practice to define a procedure, or even a language feature, for these kinds of defensive checks, usually called assert. What assert does is it takes a Boolean expression that is essentially a claim that this expression should be true at this point in the program. And if it's not true, then assert will throw an exception and stop the program. Although this approach actually abstracts away from exactly what happens when that assertion fails. It might exit the program, it might record the event in a log file, it might even email a report to a maintainer. That's the beauty of just packaging all that in an assert. Assertions have the added benefit of documenting an assumption about the state of the program at that point. In other words, this is readable to a human programmer. It says, at this point, it should always be true that x is greater than or equal to zero. Unlike a comment, an assertion is actually executable code. It enforces that assumption at runtime. Now in Java, runtime assertions are actually a built-in feature of the language. This is not a function call in Java, it's actually a statement. The simplest form of the assert statement just takes a Boolean expression, exactly as shown above. Notice we don't need to give parentheses to it, it's kind of like a return statement in that sense. And it throws an assertion error if the Boolean expression evaluates to false. Now, an assert statement in Java may also have a description expression, which is usually a string, but may also be a primitive type or a reference to an object. That description is printed in an error message when the assertion fails, so it can be used to provide additional details to the programmer about the cause of failure. The description follows the asserted expression separated by a colon. So if x equals negative 1 when this assertion statement is hit, then this assertion will fail with the error message x is negative 1, along with a stack trace which is what you get with every exception that's thrown and never caught, it tells you where the assert statement was found in your code and the sequence of calls that brought the program to that point. That's a lot of information for you to get started in finding the bug. However, a serious problem with Java assertions is that they are turned off by default. If you just run your program as usual, none of your assertions will be checked. It will just skip over this line entirely. Java's designers did this, they made this the default behavior because checking assertions can sometimes be costly to performance. So, for example, a procedure that searches an array using binary search typically has a precondition that the array be sorted before you call it. Asserting this requirement, you know, testing whether the array actually is sorted would require scanning through the entire array, which would turn an operation that ought to run in logarithmic time, binary search is a logarithmic operation, the one that takes linear time just because you're testing whether the array actually is sorted. Now, you should be willing, even eager, to pay this linear cost during testing, during development, since it makes your debugging so much easier to catch that case where you forgot to sort the array before using this binary search, but not after the program is released to users. 
For most applications, however, for most assertions, assertions are not expensive compared to the rest of the code, and the benefit they provide in bug checking is often worth that small cost in performance. So in Java, you have to enable assertions explicitly by passing dash EA, which stands for enable assertions, to the Java virtual machine. In Eclipse, you can enable assertions by going to run, run configurations arguments, and putting EA in the VM arguments box. In fact, it's best to enable them by default by going to Preferences, Java, Install, JREs, Edit, Default, VM, Arguments. And that's what we recommend you do when you set up for the problem sets in this course. It's always a good idea to have assertions turned on when you're running JUnit tests, because then you know you're in a development situation, and performance shouldn't matter as much as getting it right. So you can write a JUnit test that ensures that assertions are enabled. And what this does is it creates an assertion that should always Fail, this should always throw an assertion error, and the test expects that it will throw an assertion error. So if assertions happen to be turned on, this test is going to pass because it's going to correctly throw an assertion error. If, if assertions are turned off, it's going to just flow happily past this assertion statement, and the test will not see the assertion error that it's expecting. Note that the Java assert statement is a different mechanism than the JUnit method assert true, assert equals, etc. Now they all assert a predicate about your code, but they're designed for use in different contexts. The assert statement should be used in implementation code for defensive checks inside the implementation. The JUnit assert methods should be used only in JUnit tests to check the results of a test. Now the assert statements don't run without that dash EA argument but the JUnit assert methods will always run. Now here's some things that you should assert in your implementations. It's great to assert preconditions like we saw for square root above. It's great to assert post conditions, the requirements on return values. This kind of assertion is sometimes called a self-check. For example, the square root method might square its result to check that it is actually reasonably close to x and assert that that's true. If a conditional or switch does not cover all the possible cases, it's a good practice to use an assertion to block the illegal cases. The assertion in this default clause is the effect of asserting that val must be one of the five val letters. Now, when should you insert these runtime assertions? When should you add them to your code? Well, you should write, add them as you're writing the code, not after the fact. Because it's while you're writing the code that you have these important invariants, these important properties that must be true, in your head. If you postpone writing the assertions, you're less likely to do it, and you're liable to forget some important invariants. Now, runtime assertions are not free. They can clutter the code, so they must be used judiciously. You should avoid trivial assertions, just as you would avoid uninformative comments. For example, if you just assign y plus 1 to x, there's no reason at all to assert that x is now equal to y plus 1. Just finds bugs in the compiler of the Java Virtual Machine, which are components that you should trust until you have good reason to doubt them. If an assertion is obvious from its local context, leave it out, just like we've said with comments. Now, never use assertions to test conditions that are external to your program, such as the existence of files, the availability of the network, correctness of input typed by a human user. Assertions should test the internal state of your program to ensure that it's within the bounds of its specification. When an assertion fails, it indicates that the program has run off the rails, in some sense, into a state in which it was not designed to function properly. Assertion failures should indicate bugs. External failures are not bugs. There's no change you can make to your program in, advent, in advance that will prevent, for example, the network from going down. External failures should be handled using exceptions instead. Now, many assertion and mechanisms are designed so that assertions are executed only during testing and debugging and turned off when the program is released to users. As we saw above, Java's assert statement behaves this way. Since assertions may be disabled sometimes, the correctness of your program should never depend on whether or not the assertion expressions are executed. In particular, asserted expressions should not have side effects. For example, if you want to assert that an element removed from a list was actually found in the list, that's what list.remove returns as its return value, a Boolean value that says, well, x actually was there and I removed it. But you should not bury that and remove call in this assert, because if assertions are disabled, this entire expression doesn't run, and x is never removed from the list. 
you have to write it like this instead. That is, make your call to remove, and then assert the found variable.